Jeff Career here. It's ringside on WGSO. Very pleased to have on another guest now uh, joining us. Uh, the book is The Magic Man in the Sky. Is it possible to prove the existence of God? Well, we've got a guest who's going to address that. He's senior pastor of uh, Hickory Hammock Baptist Church in Milton, Florida. Very pleased uh, to have with us uh, Carl Gallup's joining us here on the Ringside program. And, uh, Pastor, good morning. How are you? Well, good morning, Jeff. Thank you. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. By the way, I have a lot of ties to New Orleans, so it's uh, it's great to be on the radio with you. I enjoy your show as well. Well, thank you very much, and uh, appreciate you being with us. Congratulations on your book. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, why you wrote it, Pastor. Thank you so much. Yeah, the, the book is entitled The Magic Man in the Sky, Effectively Defending the Christian Faith. And I have been the senior pastor of this church you just mentioned, a uh, large uh, Baptist church on the Gulf Coast for 25 years. Um, uh, about 30 years in ministry. Prior to that, uh, 10 years in Florida law in the field of Florida law enforcement. And I'm also the founder of the world-famous YouTube uh, biblical apologetic site, P.P. Simmons. We have some 23 million viewers and 20, 21,000 subscribers. It's only been up for a couple of years. And, and in the process of all of those years of ministry and plus my investigative mind from law enforcement and uh, years of uh, debating with uh, secularists, uh, evolutionists, <laughs> atheists, uh, of course, speak, uh, teaching and preaching the Bible, conferences, revivals all mm -hmm. over the world. Um, I, I just thought it was time for a good, fresh, fluid, flowing, uh, <laughs> biblical apologetic that dealt with the uh, issues of the day, the arguments of the day, but yet um, I wanted to make sure that it was understandable and within reach of uh, you know, uh, the folks that just, just wanted to know how to answer these tough questions now, in, in this highly secular world we live in. Let's talk about it. Uh, now, in your book, you, you say that uh, people that, that read will discover that there, that there is an intelligent designer behind all creation, and his existence can be proven. How, how yeah. can that be proven? Well, you know, Jeff, I'm going to give you and your listeners a good chunk of it away, but okay. I don't want to give it completely away. Oh, I, I want folks to read the book, yes. not only because that's a central theme of the book, but because there's so much else wrapped around it, and I don't want to you know, just give the answer and then, then say, okay, well, I've got the answer. I don't need the book. Because <laughs> right. there's, there's dozens of other things that wrap around it. But the bottom line to your, to your question, Jeff, yes, it, 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 and it begins with a logical uh, question. If there is a God, a creator, an intelligent designer, and of course I believe there is, but let's just say if there is, if he is the God of the Bible, and of course I do believe he is, then, then that means, according to the Bible, that he is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent, you know, sovereign. He, he's bigger than anything we can imagine. Well, if all of that's true, then, Jeff, doesn't it make sense that this God could be proven, not only that, that he could prove himself, not only that, that he would prove himself, well, here's the here's the okay. thing. It's not that I have proven the existence of God, Jeff. It's that God himself said in the scriptures, and my book references it all, and then gives the evidence. He says, I have done this thing so that you will know that I am the Lord your God, and there is none other. And then he says what it is that he did. Now, what he says that he did and that he will do has unfolded over the last several thousand years, 2,500, 3,000 years of history. It is now on our television sets, in our news, on the Internet, every single day. And God said it thousands of years before it happened. And he said, when this happens, when this occurs, you will know that I am God. And beside me, there is no other God. So, so what I'm trying to tell you, Jeff, and your listeners, is that God himself, has proven himself, and I use the word undeniable, irrefutable, indefensible. He, he has proven himself. God has proven his own existence, and it's irrefutable. And, and I've got to say this, Jeff. Okay, so we can learn more in your book, but can you give us some more nuggets? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I, can give, I can give you many nuggets, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, but, but I, but I want to say this. The, the editors... Um, and, and the manuscript reviewers of my book, mm -hmm. when they got to that portion where I was going to prove the existence of God, right. um, I, every one of them wrote me back and said, you know, when we got to that and we saw your claim that you could do this, we thought, well, you know, this is just going to be the same old dribble we've heard for right. years, and how is he going to do that? Every one of them said, Carl, you've done it. 
I've never seen this before. I've never understood this. So before. some of these were non-believers, uh, Pastor, who, who said, wow, you convinced them about the existence of God? I'm sorry, I was talking and I didn't hear no, your were, were some question. were some of the folks who actually uh, wrote back to you and were convinced by what you wrote, were some of them non-believers or atheists who... who made... uh, no, no, these would have all been manuscript reviewers, those were all believers, and now the editors, I don't know. Uh, the, you know, they came from various public publication uh, okay. uh, publicists, mm-hmm. and... Um, and then finally, of course, uh, the the uh, the publisher that, that did my book, WND Books. And so those folks uh, that that I don't know, uh, they were telling me, you know, yes, yes, you, you've done it. So um, I, I, I don't know their well, their particular religious background. Certainly, uh, it's a, another enticing reason to uh, get a copy of your book and read it now. You also talk, uh, Pastor, about um, the truth that real science and the scripture are inseparably linked. Uh, please explain yeah. if you could. Yeah. Well, the bottom line is this. The Bible's never catching up to truth. Truth is always catching up to the Word of God. Um, there, are, uh, in, there are many statements in the Bible that are scientifically accurate and valid, but, but we didn't know them until uh, just recently. I'll, I'll give you one little example. Um, it, the Bible proclaims that, uh, that the things that have been made have been made out of those things which are not seen. Things that are seen have been constructed and made out of things which are not seen. The Scripture proclaimed that 2,000 years ago. Uh, we, we didn't have any idea and any understanding of quantum mechanics and quantum theory mm-hmm. uh, until, a, until a little over 100 years ago. Right. So it's only been in the last century mm-hmm. that, that, that we've discovered that, my goodness, everything that we see, including the laws that govern the things that we see are directed by and are constructed by things that we do, don't see and cannot see. And, and, and many aspects of quantum mechanics are still at the theoretical aspect. We still haven't seen them, but we theorize that, that those particles and elements and powers are there and we see how they work. So, and, and, and so the Bible, for example, made that statement 2,000 years ago. So... so uh, yes, uh, the Bible and science mm-hmm. are irrefutably linked. The theory, the modern-day theory of evolution, speaks of speciation, uh, the differences that occur uh, in natural selection between species. In other words, there are many variations of dogs and horses mm-hmm. and cats, and we know these, this happens through genetic transference and et cetera. And, and well, you know, the Bible speaks of that, uh, the different species. But the Bible also declares that each is according to its own kind. I mean, the book of Genesis opens up with that, Jeff. Well, what does modern science tell us? Thus far, in our deepest studies of DNA and, and, and genome uh, experimentation, uh, there, there appear to be genetic locks upon the various kinds, if you will, mm-hmm. such that we might have many species of horses, but horses are always horses. So the... We might have many species of dogs, but dogs are always mm-hmm. dogs, um, and, which is exactly what the Word of God has proclaimed for thousands of years. So the more science advances, the more it just uh, affirms the existence of God, the more well, it my, uh, verifies the opinion, Bible. Yes, that's mm-hmm. exactly, that's one of the premises of, uh, of my book, yes. 504-556-9696, our talk line. Pastor Carl Gallups is with us. The book is The Magic Man in the Sky. Uh, it's a WND book. Can people get it at Amazon.com, Pastor? Oh, yes, and, and thank you for asking. They can get it at Amazon.com. The easiest way is just to put my name, Carl Gallups, G-A-L-L-U-P-S, in Amazon. It comes right up. They can get it at WND Superstore. Um, and and, uh, and I, I've got to say this, it's been uh, named number one bestseller, Religion and Science, on Amazon.com, number one new release uh, in Religion and Science on Amazon.com. Amazon sold completely out before the release date, Jeff. The That's fantastic. Congratulations. Date. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's, it's, it's going wild. I mean, people mm. all over the country are talking about it. I'm so thrilled. I think the Lord is really using it. People are finding out. I filled it with humor, mm-hmm. um, uh, quick-flowing text and narrative, uh, but a lot of good, meaty stuff as well, and I explain it. I bring it right down to the level that uh, a high school student could mm-hmm. grasp it and get it, and, and, uh, and, and people are, are really, really enjoying this. I've, I've had uh, pastors call me, uh, different people, uh, college, university uh, mm-hmm. professors call me and say, man, we're going to use this. Great. I'm very excited. Thank All you. right, let's take some more calls. Uh, let's go to Uptown. Let's see what Jim has to say. Hey, Jim, welcome to the program. All right, Jeff. 
Yes, sir. Now, I'm wondering if there's any proof that if Bobby Jindal <laughs> is promoted, we're not gets the opportunity to be the talking about uh, Bobby Jindal. We're, we're, yeah, we're, 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 we're for uh, vice president. Uh huh. That's any divine intuition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, I couldn't hear the entirety of the question, but I heard Bobby Jindal, and I heard much of your program before. Yes. And, and uh, so, so is there is there a question there for me? No, he's wondering if Bobby Jindal is chosen as a VP. Is that proof of God's existence? Yeah, <laughs> it very well could mm-hmm. be. <laughs> In fact, I might have to rewrite my book, Jeff. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jim. Thanks. Uh, let me ask you this, Pastor. I mean, this yeah. is a this is a tough time for people. Uh, you've got bad economy. You've got a lot of uh, out of work folks. You've got despair. You've got all these folks believing there's Armageddon coming, and you know the stupid Mayan calendar nonsense, and yeah. Yeah. all of these uh, end timers. Um, obviously, uh, it seems like uh, people are unfortunately many people out there. Uh, are not realizing the truths in the Bible, not going back to uh, their faith and and getting sort of uh, just locked into the despair that is around them in this society today. Yeah. Oh, and you want me to comment on that? Yeah, please. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Brilliantly stated, and that's a concern of mine as well. Listen, I, I do a lot of prophecy conferences and prophecy teaching and preaching, and one of the balances that I try to keep and help people understand is this. You know, people ask me, are we living in the last days? Well, that's a loaded question. I mean, we've been living in the last days ever since the appearance of Jesus Christ, ever since his resurrection, because from there forward, you know, <laughs> we're looking for his return. Um, uh, but, but I can say this. According to biblical prophecy and biblical truth, ever since the return of Israel in 1948, the countdown clock has started. Jesus said in, in, in Matthew chapter uh, uh, 24 verse 14 he says and when this gospel of the kingdom is preached unto all the nations then the end will come well you know jeff that that technology has just only been around in the last hundred years and really in, uh, only in the last 20 25 years with the advent of internet and cell phones mm-hmm. and, you know right. jet air travel uh, all over so so what's happening is we are seeing uh very succinct uh definitive prophecies of, of the return of the Lord being fulfilled in our time. I'll tell you another big one. is Ezekiel 38, where it speaks of a, a returned Israel being in the land in the last days, being surrounded by enemies, and a coalition of nations. Many have interpreted those uh, ancient Bible names to mean nations like Iran and Russia and right. Syria and Lebanon and, and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and Egypt and Libya. Uh, those, those nations are all listed there under their old table of nation names. And the Bible said, uh, 2,500 years ago, that there would come a time in history when Israel would be back in the land, and those particular nations would begin to uh, coalesce with each other uh, and collude with each other to attack Israel. Well, Jeff, we're, we're watching that happen on the news I, every I w- night. I was just going to so, say, yeah, it looks like that's going on right now. Yeah, and my book uh, addresses all of that, as a matter of fact. So, um, uh, so, so the bottom line, here's the balance I keep. We are living in very prophetic times, yes. We're living in very biblical times. But if one belongs to the Lord, the message of the Bible is, you have nothing to fear. Because, because what happens is, the Lord returns and sets up his kingdom, and those that belong to the Lord are, are with him. Um, but, but in the meantime, we also don't know the day or the hour. Right. So I don't run around crying, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, mm-hmm. it's gloom and doom. I'm a very positive person. I mean, yeah. if I thought the end was just imminent and everything was gloom and doom why would i have taken the time to write a book <laughs> well and, and that's a good point and, and the people that, who have announced well the end is here the end is here they've all looked foolish when the, well, those dates right. have passed and the end didn't occur that's right and here's the balance jesus gave us he said look you must know the seasons in fact he he chastised the pharisees for not knowing the season of his first coming he says you've got to know the seasons he said how is it you can look at the sky and tell what the weather is, but you can't look at the scriptures and tell what the season of prophecy is. So I believe we're in the season of the last days, yes. Uh, but but I'm not going to name a date and a time, right. and I'm not going to proclaim that 2012 is the date, because that is what makes us look foolish. Pastor, we're going to do it again. I appreciate it very much, and uh, also want to say uh, it's good to have a... Uh 
Get your copy of my new book, The Magic Man in the Sky, Effectively Defending the Christian Faith. Considering the days in which we now live, you need this book. Available at Amazon.com and WND Superstore. Get your copy today.